and welcome to Binary Jazz. Recording is in progress. We are the podcast that you are listening to. Hopefully this was your decision. It's not being used as some form of future torture. And now I'm imagining my voice echoing like in a, a more and more computerized way, like torture, 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 torture. And someone's <laughs> like, you people. Uh, here's how it works. We show up uh, as we are. No prep. We see each other's happy faces, hit record, and just see what happens. Allison brings a topic. Often we uh, touch on that topic. Also often we figure out at the end what the topic really is. Quite often... Chris and I are way off the mark. Uh, hijinks ensue. It's just friends hanging out. But not with you if you're being tortured listening to this, 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 this. All right. Uh, binaryjazz.us. There's links to anywhere you would want to find us. Um, unless the internet's no longer a thing, in which case there was this horrid site called Twitter where you could communicate in 280 characters and everyone hated everyone else on there, uh, except for little flashes of, of love. You know, the big, the big social media news, I'm sure you're all aware, fleets are going away. <laughs> Do you ever click I've on one? I've never seen a fleet. I've clicked on many and then been disappointed I, every time. <laughs> I, uh, it felt too much to me like TikTok, I think, based on my understanding of what TikTok is. I might be wrong. <laughs> what the kids um, are doing and- these days. And also too much like Instagram stories, I believe yeah. they're called. And so I said, no, thank you. If I wanted those, I would be on those. I like my self-loathing 280 written characters at a time, not video or photo or whatever audio. You're like barely hanging to the cliff of Twitter as it is. Like you're just like slow. There are many days where I let go. <laughs> and then I reach back up and grab onto it hours later and I haven't fallen. I don't know. I... Yeah, you're, that's, that's accurate. I use Twitter. I'm not even sure the last time I tweeted. Actually, that's not true. I think, I, well, that is true. But I, earlier this week, I tweeted. I watched a video uh, on some computer thing. And there was an example, like, user is admin, is super admin, blah, blah, blah. And then the, this lovely gentleman with an Australian accent, probably not an accent because he's from Australia. So the lovely Australian gentleman said something about user is Gary. And I was immediately engaged for the rest of it because I'm like, I'm Gary. So I tweeted at him half a world away. That is a very cool part of Twitter. That was one of those like moments of joy. Um, and uh, in the video, he said, please send pictures of your doggos. Um, so I shared a picture of my doggo uh, on Tuesday. This what you didn't realize when, when he asked you to send a picture of your doggo, um, that's my attempt at an like Australian that. accent. How'd that, oh, how'd it was, that go? It was just like that, actually. <laughs> was the coordinating hand gesture i missed it that was me stopping myself in the middle of a a statement and just like (laughs) uh what you didn't realize when he asked you for pictures of your doggo uh is that australians add uh, a vowel at the end of every word and shorten it to like a third of the actual length so uh, a dog is obviously a doggo. It, we couldn't shorten it because it, we just had an add a vowel. So we actually made it longer. Uh, and uh, it should be a do then. Be like the first letter and an extra O. <laughs> or maybe a doe. But, but uh, obviously electricians are sparkies and uh, firemen are fireys. And <laughs> Those this is all real, by the way. This is all. I know they are. Yeah. Sparky. Yeah. I know. But fi- I, I, asked about, I asked about firemen once if they were fireys. And they said yes, like it's the actual Australians control. that I knew, that I was speaking to at the time. <laughs> fire people <laughs> and the fireies, uh, contractors. Yeah. Are, you call them contractors. We call them tradies. Tradies, yeah, because trades people, I guess. Just one big lump. I, I don't. I'm not sure that that's an Australian accent. I feel like that's just a British accent that's a little bit more annoying. It's something. I mean, because I, 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 an Australian fine. accent to me, whenever I hear people, someone speaking an Australian accent, it sounds like an American accent. And every once in a while, there's just a weird twang with certain words. And like, I can't, I can't, like, I don't know what words have that twang. So in my head, I can't really, I can't wrap my brain around it because I don't know when to do the thing. 
<laughs> you know, like it's easy if it's like, if it's English or if I'm making a failed attempt at like a French accent or some sort of like Eastern European thing, like I, you know, it's Italian, always on. Perhaps. It's always on. Yes. Uh, it's always on. Um, yeah. It's a, I can, I can, I can almost imagine Chris doing an Italian accent. It takes quite a bit of effort, but <laughs> it's not that, that difficult. That sounded way too uh, Barovia or uh, Transylvania. I know. I feel like you wanted like end that sentence with like, uh, when you're here, your family. Like, oh. <laughs> Welcome to the Olive All right. I, yeah. I thought that's where that was going. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast anyway. where Chris practices all his accents for D&D. At least you have yeah. all the, um, like you understand the colonial parentage of the accent. Um, so at least your family tree is like going back to the root, I guess. Mm-hmm. South South African is interesting too because it's very similar to Australian, a little bit more British, but a different twang, and that's also really hard to identify. Like I, it's just there's certain things where like I, they're like it's my life. My life's goal is to figure out this accent. <laughs> I've watched videos. I've watched videos on like accents from different regions, and and like and I've watched videos on how to do an Australian accent. I, I like I just I certain things like I can I can get and. But it's not like, like a lot of the videos, particularly like, like from people who study accents are all about like, um, the shape that your mouth makes when you're speaking and where your tongue is. And none of that stuff is stuff that I'm thinking about consciously when I'm making the sounds with my actual mouth. Um, well, this is going to be an uncomfortable rest of the episodes. I think about my mouth and <laughs> position and shape. <laughs> Do you remember the presentation I gave at the retreat about Canadian accents? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, That was part of it was um, there's like, like when people make fun of like a boot, it's just like, that's a, a mouth shape. Yeah, it's it's a your. I'm gonna have to put like a piece of cardboard in front of my <laughs> face for the duration of this episode because I'm so this... uncomfortable thinking right now. And my tongue, what do I do? Where do I put the damn thing? I'm gonna take my tongue out and stick it in my pocket. We uh, 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 yeah, yeah. we had a we had a a company town hall this week, uh, and the CEO was speaking. The townie, I believe you would call it. A townie, yeah, obviously a townie. Um, uh, and uh, and the CEO was speaking, and he's got a, a, a very interesting English accent. Uh, and I spent Good way deal. too much time studying what his mouth was doing. I don't know if I was listening to the words he was saying. I was just studying what his mouth was doing and the sounds that it was making. Because that was, I guess that was more interesting than, than the words. <laughs> the town hall about Chris? Oh. Whatever. Something. Someone's mouth. And <laughs> Thank you for attending your company Mouth and Tongue Town Hall. I'm going to suggest that to my boss. Hey, we need a Mouth and Tongue Town Hall. And he's going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Exactly? <laughs> what are you? We, uh, we said goodbye to our junior dev on her departure. Yes, she's still alive. She's went to another company. And um, so we had like an hour hangout. Um, I almost got the spit take, which would have been the highlight of my week, honestly. Um, and <laughs> so spit take that's not fully completed was even funnier though. I, I for a minute, I was, I, I thought that Chris was going to like cough and then I felt like an asshole, but he didn't. So then I was bummed that it wasn't the spit take. <laughs> I hope you weren't too uncomfortable for our entertainment. I hope you were just uncomfortable enough for our entertainment. Um, so we had this thing yesterday and uh, it was like, it you know, small company, like company culture is one of those things you kind of have to figure out, especially when you're, you know, we're fairly new in the remote world. Like, you know, remote was a thing, but there was also like in person was a thing. So being fully remote for more than a year and continuing that, you know, it's, it's like trying to uh, identify what that means for us. So it's like, hey, say something nice about this person that's leaving. Like, wow, this isn't like an on the spot, uncomfortable situation for anyone here, is it? Um, and I give our product manager a lot of credit because he was like, you know, what my wife and I often do is like high point, low point. So how about everyone do high point, low point for the time? <laughs> and he was totally not serious. 
but also like it was just a wonderful way to point out like how ridiculous it was like let's manufacture you know this interaction um and i'm not blaming anyone for that just that humans are weird and trying to figure out how to handle that in a remote world is something and holy shit i'm in my head maybe we should get into the topic (laughs) (laughs) also (laughs) this episode gets tagged for language i it's fine most of them are tagged for language and it's mostly my fault yeah well i will wear that mantle today what does that mean can you read that mantle yeah I think a mantle like on top of a fireplace. That's not. I thought uh, it was like a mantle would be like a coat. A king's mantle. Yeah, yeah. Oh. There's a mantle okay. you can wear. Okay, it's a thing. Got like it. the priest's mantle. Is that? But I kind of like. I kind of like your version. Prefer to be dismantled, honestly. It's kind of like you're yoked with this like heavier version. Do we no, know I'm that because of good. Catholic school, or do we I know that just thought- because of books? I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm, 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 I'm Gary not know that just because he wasn't paying attention in just any school. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's, there's several options here. The topic for this week is solipsism. Solipsism? So lipsism. Don't ask us. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but like almost most of my topics are just things that I've seen. <laughs> uh, can yeah. you spell it for me? I think I, I spelled it wrong. I love I'm that, sure by the way. Uh, S O L I P S I S M. Okay, oh. I did not spell it wrong. It just <laughs> looks wrong. There's no Y in it at all. No, correct? I know there's no Y. I just I don't know if the. Oh, I had a, there was a Y when I spelled it in my head. I could see how you could put a Y in it. I'm not actually sure where the Y was. <laughs> I don't now. know where the where, I hear where the it spelled. Y I'm like, where the hell was I thinking? Um, <laughs> I definitely I, know I like, this word exists. This word occupies space in my brain. Um, I don't know that I could describe what it means, but it's definitely word, somewhere. There's there's some locked knowledge. I will already say that there are times when I look at uh, the uh, our website, binaryjazz.us on the internet, for those who are torturing. Uh, and um, there are topics, and I look at the word, and I'm like, I have no idea what that means. And like... I, I, in those cases, uh, uh, think to myself, I should listen to the last 10 minutes of the episode and find out. I don't, but I should. Um, and so this is like a, this word is having a Forrest Gump moment in my head where like I hear it and it's like entering and the rest of my brain is like seats taken and that's it. So solipsism, good to meet you. Just passing through. I'm going to forget this one as this episode's over unless it is life changing. So no pressure or anything. Um, I believe it's it's a literary thing. Because I said that I read it? No. Not just <laughs> because you said that you read it. Because the context in which I know the word is literary, I guess. Yeah. That's how I know most words. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Oh man, I hate, I hate, I hate this sensation of uh, knowing that I should know something, but not actually having a fucking clue. And then, (laughs) I mean, that is the, that is the entire, (laughs) yes, but, but to be fair, most of the time you bring a topic and I just don't have a clue and that's fine. Like it's, it's the tension of like sort of knowing or knowing part of something or knowing that you knew this at one point and you do not now is <laughs> that is but that also might mean that you just don't need to know it <laughs> yeah. yes my brain has decided that through. it was not important right. to, yeah seats taken yep <laughs> yeah which is fascinating because there are some words um oh my god and i can't remember the word now holy shit what's the uh, thing um, petrichor how did you know that I was reading your brain. It was right there in your brain. It was right there in the front of your brain. <laughs> I think Petra for often, good. often after these episodes, I finish and say, I really needed that. I'm not sure this is that day. That t- I <laughs> don't know. That's where we're going to end. We're working into your brain. 
It's a little uncomfortable. I am often, just like Twitter, I am often trying to let go of it and then I reach back out and it's right there, sadly. Not my brain, not the reading of my brain. I'm not in your brain now. I was just in your brain when you were looking solid for Solid choice. Word. It's a solid choice. I wouldn't like take up residency so, or anything. You're welcome to. You're welcome to. <laughs> it's a risky um, one. I, I live rent free in your brain anyway, Gary. <laughs> Well played. Well played. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we should pass some kind of food emoji as a way to celebrate something clever like that. Perhaps a taco. No. Uh, Are we able to do? There's there's reaction emojis in Zoom now. Oh yeah, you can do dot dot dot. So then I can search for taco, and search results emojis. show nothing. So there's Honestly, no though, taco. You I put a button in front of me that says download emojis. There's a hundred percent chance I'm going to click that son of a bitch. You want to give Gary a virus? Send him an email that says download emojis. There's no dust. Food listen, listen being tortured. Email was the way we used to pass time at work and pretend that we were getting things done. It was like asynchronous meetings where only one person talked. That's what. <laughs> You're in a meeting where like someone's just droning on and on and no one actually cares. Yeah. Usually in a salaried situation. Yes. That's what email is. I didn't ask for this. I'm expected to acknowledge it, but often. Great. There were a lot of words. Uh, I, I, every once in a while. Um, None of which were our topic today. The words every once today. in a what, while. What is the topic again? Solipsism. Uh, every once in a while, a recruiter, usually one in India, oh, uh, and usually one that will say that they're not actually a recruiter, um, yeah. will contact my work email, thinking that I am thinking that I am like a hiring manager of some sort, and trying to sell me on their wonderful developer candidates that they have, and so. This happened recently, and I'm like, one, I'm not the person you need to talk to about this. Two, uh, we actually have our own internal uh, recruiter now, so we don't need your services, whatever they may be. And three, um, <coughs> we wouldn't work with you directly anyway. Uh, we would want to work directly with the developer that whom you represent so they can uh, fill out an application on our website. And I thought that was pretty clear about, you know, who I am and, and where I am in the relationship of things, but they continue. They sent me another email that was like, um, uh, See, this, here was this meeting that took place and you thought you were sharing information and they were like, Oh, go to meeting. <laughs> we're playing on their phone. Like they, they, they... <laughs> so looks at um, um, and they were like, uh, uh, well, who is, who is the, per who is the person that I should send this to? And I'm like, look, I don't think that if you, even if you sent it to the person who you should send it to, that they would, that they would look at the email anyway, because it's not going through our normal pipeline. So I would contact just recommend your, as a recruiter. if you contact actually me. care about your developers to actually just send them through the application process. So Lipsism is a situation where there is uh, knowledge and there is a uh, disagreement in the value of that knowledge. So Chris, in your case, you had the knowledge that I am not the right person to deal with this shit, right? <laughs> and the other person had that knowledge too. One of you actually cared about that knowledge and the other <laughs> did not. Solipsism. Also, um, sidebar on recruiters. My sister-in-law mm -hmm. um, was downsized back in, I think, October or November. I don't remember when. Uh, and, and so she's, she's like in the tech world. Uh, she does uh, database things um, that I'm like, that's fascinating. I wish I understood like a lot of what you're saying. <laughs> Please keep talking. Maybe I'll catch on. Um, and so, it, you know, because of like her specialty, it's taken her a bit of time to find a job. Uh, you know, over a hundred plus, like, you know, legit leads where she contacted people. Um, but she just... The recruiting situation, because the bounty for getting someone hired is so high, mm. recruiters 
many recruiters just take a shotgun approach and are like, oh, you have this keyword in your resume. Like, let's let's go and see what happens because I don't have to work too hard. If I get you a job, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to make bank on some of these really specialty things. It's it's a, it's a, uh, economics of the situation are very unfortunate. So happily for her, she didn't go through recruiter where she is now. She seems to like it. Unfortunately, the there's very story. few good recruiters, at least in the tech industry that I've ever dealt with. <laughs> and most of, some of them don't even like relay your actual salary expectations to the people they're dealing with. They just mm. lowball you, which is weird because they get more money if you, if you get more money. So, but they also just want it to be. Yeah. But if you get hired for less, they increase the chances of you getting hired, which means they get some it's it, yeah. The, the economic imperative is not symmetrical between the recruiter and the person looking to be hired. This is, mm -hmm. this is a bad relationship. I don't know that, that I have gotten a job, uh, Ever just full stop. No, uh, I don't know that I've gotten a job uh, through a recruiter, uh, except when I was like using it as like a temp agency. Um, right. But I mean, the last the last recruiting company that I had any dealings with at all was um, was Robert Half. I don't know if you all. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and they had like this intense process where you're like, okay, we're going to have you come in. We're going to have you do a test. We're going to have you do another test. We're going to do this yeah. all. This. And I did all the, did all the things. And what did that get me? Nothing. Just Jack. I had several interviews via Robert Half uh, in Jacksonville. I will call them out because <laughs> I think you should avoid them. Uh, and, uh, and I was very explicit. Like I'm, I'm not going into an office. Like that's just full stop. Not the table. Uh, this was, this was, I, this was when I was like, probably at WDS still mm. had to have been, uh, I'm like, I'm not, I, I'm going to work remote. Um, I'm not going into an office. And so that was a surprise to the people that I had interviews with that they had not heard <coughs> that. And I'm like, this is there. I'm not coming into an office. And they're like, oh, well, we're not remote. All right. Well, I'm glad I, uh, showered and put on a shirt and tie. I was a little more polite than that but not a ton. Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which again, goes back to the, like the economic comparative on Robert half side is like, I don't care if you're happy with your job. I just need you to get one. So I get paid. I like, I like how, like after a few years of, of having zero contact with them at all whatsoever, like the emails obviously got fewer and farther between. And then they started changing tone and they're like i know that you're probably not looking for yourself but maybe you have a friend that might be interested in this position yeah. and i'm like well played <laughs> i don't i don't Mark have this, as but fan. well played <laughs> <clears throat> like i'm sure i'm sure that like i'm gonna drop your point blank completely unknown uh job lead into the local wordpress uh meetup groups slack channel knowing next to nothing about it among people that like maybe i don't know real well but like know it all and like they're totally going to be down with this thing that like i have no idea about yeah i'm, I'm down with that what's <clears throat> in it for me that's the question what's nothing it? yeah what's my finder's fee I mean, that's, that's the, mm. that is following the, the logic to its dis disgustingly capitalist conclusion. And that I is a solipsism. <laughs> disgustingly capitalist solution. Solipsism. God. I wish that when people said things like that, like things like, like capitalism has just been kicking my ass recently. Like I wish people said stuff like that on Twitter more, you know? I'm on like, it. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I, I might have something to tweet about today. Um, no, like there's this thing, you know, I'm. Um, yeah, I, I wish that I wish that like we could acknowledge that more like. Like yesterday, like, oh, it was great working with you and we appreciate your loyalty. Like, no, stop. It was great working together. Like your loyalty has nothing to do. Like mm. you were great well, to work with. Like, is is around. Yeah, you were loyal because you had to fucking feed your family. Like, mm -hmm. that's not, there's not, this is again that weird economic imperative. Like, I, 
I don't show up to work because I'm super excited about, like, what am I excited about? Not excited about today. I'm not excited about hitting connection limits in MySQL databases. Like, honestly, I'm very not excited about it. Like, I could not give less of a shit about it. But I am excited about it being payday yesterday. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know, maybe we'll get sushi tonight. Or like, hey, this weekend, let's go to the park and grab ice cream as a family. Like, that's exciting. But my loyalty is not to database connections that I couldn't care less about. It's about, you know, being a provider for my family. And if I could get paid just as much to work, you know, I don't know, five or 10 minutes a week. Um, yeah, that loyalty would not exist. Like, let's be very clear on that. Like, this is- <laughs> Loyalty is very like Game of Thrones to me where I'm just like, it's. <laughs> I just don't. I mean, and it's not like, I'm like, no, no, I'm a hard worker. I show up. Like, all these things, but I'm just like loyal. Like, I mean, I guess, but you, you can't be loyal to someone who's not loyal to you. So, and that's employers aren't. So, well, yeah, there's I, no economic imperative, right? I think the, the, the business imperative is always survival. Like, there's never a business that would be like, well, I have an employee that's been loyal. I need to take care of them, even if it means banking my business. Well, no, of course not. That's ridiculous. The imperative is survival. I, so, think, I think that I've always uh, in the past, um, juxtaposed loyalty with like uh i don't know camaraderie or um like uh a sense of of belonging in the team um Mm -hmm. where like i would feel like i was loyal but it wasn't because i was loyal to the company specifically i was loyal to the people around me um and that's the thing that that would I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing that's important. That's the thing that's important to me, like personally and emotionally. Um, and when that's missing, then that's, then obviously there is a, there is there, the, like, there is no loyalty left. There's nothing that's holding me into a thing. If like the, the people part is, is not there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's a good point. Cause like, I usually like, if I'm, especially if I'm on a, a team or in a group that like I work with closely and, and like, I like a lot, then like, I definitely want to be there and do things and support my you know fellow team. Um, it's fun being successful with people you like, yeah. you know, and success is like a really nebulous <clears throat> definition, I guess, but you know, whatever that means, like as a team to like, do something and accomplish it together you know there's like that is that's a that's a cool rush and i think that 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 is one of those things that's like self-feeding that the more you do it the more you want to do it as a team and that's awesome um when that dynamic gets disrupted though it 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 can't do anything but tear apart i don't feel like there's any option like once that team you know you're, you're either you're either getting better at it or you're getting worse at it. There's no in between. There's no there's no. Oh my god! I sound like some kind of motivational speaker. Let's just move on. What is what is no, it, what today? What does it mean? <laughs> and that's solipsism. Chewbacca. That's what I was thinking of. That's someone that's loyal. That's the kind like I think that's the kind of loyalty business to expect. Like I'm not Chewbacca. We well, have no reason to be Chewbacca. Like no one has a reason. I mean, like the thing is, like like people talk about how dogs are awesome because dogs are loyal. Like, mm. I mean, I don't, it, you're, if you expect me in a workplace to be like a dog, <laughs> I might just yeah. walk away. <laughs> but also I don't even know that dogs are loyal because just out of, out of, as a, as a, you know, as a thing, like, I don't know that they like grew up in like, that is like, it's you're part of their family. You're part of their pack. And also you feed them. I think that helps. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, I, I thinking about that, like there is, there is an economic incentive for them to be loyal because they get food and yeah. housing and, you know, head and, pets, pets, and pets you know, nice. yeah. yes, yes. I'm not, I, I, yes, I 100% agree with that. Pets are nice. But I think in addition to that, there's, you know, it's, it's not a, uh, it's not a relationship without, you know, stuff happening. Uh, and now we get to hear what solipsism, solipsism actually is. <laughs> um, so just because you normally go for the roots of things, I'm going to tell you what the roots are. 
It's mm. from the Latin solus alone and ipse, self. So it's the philosophical idea that only one's mind is sure to exist. Um, so basically, oh. every, everything so like, outside yeah. your own mind is unsure. You can't actually count that it's a thing. So <clears throat> right. It's, 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 you're all figments of my imagination thing. Yeah, or like we're in a simulation if you want to like mm -hmm. take it to like those levels of just like it's those and it's those brief moments when you question that when you have like really like huge pangs of empathy and for others because you're realizing oh they're living their own story like <laughs> they're the main character in their own world um yeah and it, there's like a bunch of different forks that you can take it in and um, yeah <laughs> Gary's unhappy. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't need this today. <laughs> oh. I have um, walked 18 miles so far this week. I've been, wow. Well, that's always an indication, too, that I'm in my head. Yeah. Deep in my head. Did I look you up and I'm like, oh, it's been four Gary miles. <laughs> no, did I tell you I recorded one? I did. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. And then I deleted or I didn't. Yeah, because I ran into the yes, I should do that. That would be a better use of my time than. <laughs> but yesterday, uh, I saw a deer uh, and stopped and watched the deer for longer than is reasonable to stop and watch deer. Like, the, like even the deer was like, hey, man, move on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude. What are you staring at? Uh, and then I turned the corner in the area where I usually see like wild rabbits. There were twice as many as usual and um and i <laughs> this is so weird yeah so that was the thing and uh, you know it was like I, it was a route i i walk frequently and i i i see some of the same people and blah 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 but that area you know usually the rabbits there's only a couple that are out because they see people and they hide so a bunch of rabbits being out and that deer I don't know if I was just like the first person through there, which is a logical explanation, uh, you know, or, or whatever the case may be. But yesterday morning, uh, I knew when I went on that walk, we were putting Jude down, our dog we'd had for 13 years. Uh, so there was this like, I had my earbuds in, but I didn't actually have any audio on. That's a thing that I do when I walk sometimes when I, I don't, I, I, who's gonna talk to me? Like, it's not like walking the same direction as anybody. Like, were you passing? I don't know. But so I had him in, but I wasn't listening to anything. And so I turned that corner and seeing, or seeing the deer and just like being in the presence of that. And then uh, the rabbits, like it was, uh, the, I, there was like this energy that was very much not what I expected. And I was extremely overwhelmed in my walk. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then sat there with Jude like three hours later and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, hand on his neck. Our, our loyal dog that we, you know, fed and he was loyal and guarded the house and, uh, you know, said goodbye. And the, um, the, the vet was lovely. She got right down and looked him in the eyes and, you know, talked lovingly to him. And uh, the night before he, um, uh, he can't make it up, couldn't make it up these stairs. So Rhonda carried him up and he, you know, wasn't, a regular at the kid's bedtime. He would from time to time come into bed, put the kids to bed. But the night before he made sure to go to everyone's bedtime. So he knew, you know, before I knew, uh, you know, like, you know, knew deeply before I knew deeply. I knew abstractly there weren't a lot of days left with this dog. Um, you know, and so there was something magical about that uh, and that beauty of, of, you know, of the world of, of that, interaction with these animals that this, there was this passing energy that uh, I was so thankful for the opportunity to, to just stop and appreciate this bit of creation. And so, you know, and I think about like the, as I frame that, the solipsis of, of that moment, right? Like it's, it's a little, uh, you know, perhaps like an immature book in, in many senses that, you know, this just real root idea of energy that, you know, as this energy was leaving the world, there was this other energy that was, that was present and around. Uh, and, and like, I go, Oh, ha ha, whatever. But, but really like, I mean, there's, there's, 
there's nothing concrete there. There's clearly nothing concrete there that, that means anything to anybody but me, right? And, and I, I fully appreciate that. Um, but also there was, there, was, there was more there beyond that. Uh, there was a, a connection to, uh, I say energy, it's just a throwaway word, creation to soul, whatever you want to target it as, that, that uh, either there was a void that you know, needed to be filled um, and it was just naturally filled this way. Uh, or there was, you know, a clear need that, you know, it was going to need to be filled. You know, if there was a clear indication and the universe just fixed that imbalance temporarily. Uh, and, and, you know, had I, had I had my, my, uh, I had music on or podcasts on like what I, what, what I, what are the, you know, what, where would the difference have been, you know? And, uh, and I continue to question like, well, what, what it have, where would it have been if I, if I had been even more focused and hadn't had the earbuds in, or, you know, uh, there's that, that other layer of strata there. Um, yeah. This is so, Gary's podcast. Anyway, <laughs> I'm glad that you asked. And I wish that uh, yesterday I had recorded while I was walking uh it would have been a quite a bit more raw than that unrefined uh and and actually it no i'm glad i didn't because i needed i needed the completion of it i needed the whole circle i needed to see those those animals and uh and and feel that crazy humidity from the storm from the night before and really kind of bathe in it in in real in my perception of realness before uh taking jude in and, uh, uh, you know, looking at that full circle, I guess, to resolve. Yeah. Maybe I will try and record a podcast sometime next week. I have a friend who just sends me audio recordings that she does on walks. You don't even have to make it a podcast. You can just send it to me. <laughs> That's what I'll do. I'll just drop it in Slack and it'll be like a private podcast. It's a little radio broadcast. <laughs> I, you know, that's one of these amazing things too. You know, like, like you know, like when you see like a new technology and you're like, oh, that's cool. And you think about the impact. Can you imagine what it must have been like, like it, it, radio, like someone speaking in and like my voice now can be heard by not just the people that are around. Mm. Like I can speak and people miles away can hear. Like, like we, we totally take it for granted, which is fine because it's such a normal part of who we are. But can you imagine what that, that realization must have felt like from a non-technical level? Like this, you know. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at Binary Jazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.